Welcome back to Capes and Tights. I'm your host, Justin Soderberg. This is a comic book and pop culture podcast. This week, we had a scheduling conflict with myself and my co-host, Adam, as well as other things that are happening in our lives. And we were unable to record a fresh new episode for you today. However, we did have a thought that we'll throw back this episode and join again by our friend, Paul Eaton of Galactic Comics and Collectibles. When we did an episode back before this podcast existed, it was the main state of mind. This spun out of that podcast into Capes and Tights. And we did this episode where Paul and I went back and forth and talked about our top 10 favorite comic book cover artists and our artists in general. So we thought we'd, we released this on this episode, this podcast as well. So enjoy this one for sure. Just a little a couple of updates in that is we talked about a couple of dates of things that are happening. Obviously, this is, was released in the early parts of 2021. So some things have already gone past and so on. So the one thing we did talk about is the Bangor Comic and Toy Con. That is actually coming up if you're in the greater Bangor area in Maine. Uh, April 22nd through the 24th. Check out Bangor, the Bangor Comic and Toy Con on Facebook, on Instagram, all that stuff to get the updated current information about what's going on. Otherwise... Our list probably hasn't changed yet. So our top 10 favorite comic book cover artists from early 2021. This is myself, Justin Soderbergh, and my friend, Paul Eaton, and the owner of Galactic Comics and Collectibles for another episode of Capes and Tights. Enjoy, everybody. Cheers, Paul. How are you? Good. How you doing, Justin? Cheers. Oh, I got my beer. I got my backup beer. I'm good. Got my yeah, list. I, um, I got my vaccine appointment Tuesday morning, nine nine fifty five in the morning. Nice. I'm nice. all excited. Get myself uh, protected so I don't have to worry <laughs> as much anymore. I guess. <laughs> That's good. That's good. The little um, ones coming. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, we're here to talk about comic book. Uh, stuff again like we do all the time which you do for half your job or one of your two jobs <laughs> yes yeah half <laughs> the more fun job you talk comic books <laughs> absolutely well i guess that job now is mostly pokemon cards with a little bit of comic books but it's a solid uh 60 40 between the pokemon and the comics i don't know man i think your your pokemon story that sells comic books now yeah i i uh i have someone else who has the same fear they're like oh come on man and i brought manga in and he's like, I'm not liking where this is going. <laughs> I'm like, it'll be okay. It'll be uh, okay. We're, we're, we're rewatching, uh, or I, you know, rewatching a Big Bang Theory, and it's just getting to the point now where they're going to Stewart's comic book shop. Yep. And I was laughing because I was like, I love, like, how much research do you think they did when they went and made that comic book shop? Like, that is not what most comic book shops look like. It was way too no. put together, way too and organized way too new it's like there's no comic book stores out there that are that well looking like it's like no and, and this guy's like living in his mom's basement and can't yeah. get by and his comic book store is worth like what a couple million dollars probably beautiful and it's like it's no gorgeous. this is not no yeah, everything in stock you could want yeah. like yeah and he's like this loser that can't get by oh, i don't know i'm like well if you stopped ordering all of the museum quality statues in the backdrop you'd be able to have more money and I just love that, like, a uh, penny comes in, and all the men are just like, Yeah, and, like, it's a stereotype. I go in, every time I'm in your shop, was a female in the shop, so it's like it's such yeah. a stereotype that a female doesn't go into a comic book store, but no, nope. so and then everything um, stops if one comes in, yeah, exactly. Let's be honest, that's not true. No, <laughs> um, but it's also different. I think, like, what we talked about before, and I've talked with many other people, it's like it used to be a stigma, like, it was bad to be a comic book fan or a Pokemon right. collector or mm -hmm. a magic, you know, magic, the gathering or any of the pops or any of those things. It used to be like a, uh, you know, something you wouldn't tell people. Uh, right. Whereas now it's like, you can be open about it. I, I can wear a comic book t-shirt. I could have some comic book tattoos and no one really like, f like blinks at that. They're just like, Oh, that's just normal society now. Yeah. A lot of people are more interested in it. They're like, Oh man, uh, you're into this. Huh? Oh, I started watching some shows. Can you explain this to me or that to me? And I think we have Marvel, and, and I'll say that as a Marvel fan, but I, I do think it tends to a lot of the, the, the cinematic universes like Marvel and even DC's movies and putting it on the big screen made it like, okay, this is a normal thing. I can I can like that. So I, I would agree with that. And I think all ages are liking it. I think there's people that, I mean, my dad watches movies who could give two craps about uh, a comic book in, in the world. And 
uh, it's pretty cool to have that. So now we can talk openly about comic books and no one, no one gives a crap. So uh, That's right. let's talk comic books. So uh, we're here to do a poll list. This is a top 10 list that uh, yeah, Paul has put together his top 10 list. I put together my top 10 list. Um, some of them are easy, like not this list, but some lists are easy. Some are really <laughs> difficult. This was probably one of the ones that was on the more difficult side. Um, I felt and, so. and so we're going to talk about some Marvel or some Marvel, mostly Marvel for me, probably. Uh, wait, wait, wait. You're going to have Marvel artists on yours? I, I had, oh, I actually deleted him. I, he's in my honorable mentions now. There was someone that did do a lot for DC as well. Um, oh. But, uh, but if you think about our artists nowadays too, though, it's like, they're I think not it's a lot different than write even writers for books yeah. or, or um uh the idea that they they do switch back back and forth but maybe one started at dc went to marvel uh maybe they did marvel dc another image or idw or something like that but uh yeah they bounce around a lot more than they they, they used to it seemed like they used to be pretty stuck in something and now they're kind of all over the place if you google most of the names that i say or you say or whatever it likely has a marvel dc <laughs> and or a marvel image dc image kind yep. of thing it's like those top three um it's like it's not they don't have exclusive contracts like they potentially used to and now they start one place and there's no long-term deals and so they go back and forth um but some of my artists are have been with the the, the books they're writing or, or sorry books they're drawing for a long time like there's some artists that just like when you say the name if you're a comic book fan you go that's that person from that comic book uh, yep. other ones are like oh my god i can't believe they drew for that book <laughs> or they did a cover right? for that book it's like I, I didn't know that that's pretty cool so um pretty excited to talk i know there's probably at least one uh on name on this list that's probably going to be towards the top of both of our lists that we both have so I'm excited to yep. know at least at least one like that we're gonna be able to you know agree on, uh, and we'll go from there. So uh, if anybody hasn't listened to this uh, podcast before, we um, do ten through six really quickly. Paul reads his ten through six. Excuse me, I read my ten through six, and then we do five, 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 five sorry, five, four, three, two, one, back and forth, um, and kind of like just bust through the first, the bottom five, and then really dig into the top five, um, and again comic book artists uh cover artists artists whatever you want to call them um a lot of people who are comic book artists are like they a lot of time they get their first crack which you think is funny i feel like a lot of people get their first crack at drawing covers mm. which you think that i know it's a lot more work obviously for interiors but you'd think that like the, the thing that sells the comic book is the cover and you'd think and that you'd have to have it, something right? yeah you'd have to have some sort of like resume before you can get a cover um but there's a lot of people out there who got their first like big gigs are actually covers which is pretty cool yeah they break into um, it that way yeah uh, but again it's one page whereas interiors are you know 26 to 32 mm -hmm. pages so it's a lot more work tons of work um yeah so uh let's get started i guess uh want to read your 10 sure. through 6 sure i'll go first on this one yeah. all right so i uh so a little bit on this i had a the hardest i was still doing this list today yeah i and uh what what have, what have we been working this on on this for like a solid month if not five weeks maybe i think it's we talk we go and i was trying to do the math on it. it's like five or six weeks between these um these episodes and usually right after that's where we come up with the idea of the next episode and so yes yeah. yeah, so i would say five or six weeks but we've been we've been working on this and, and i've been working on this like i've been it's been in the back of my mind i've been thinking about it i've been doing things with it and up till this morning i got up and was still working on it before i went to work i i uh it, this has been like one of the hardest ones um and a little bit about this so this list is for me this is my top 10 mm -hmm. uh my favorite this isn't anybody's gonna say oh i can't believe this person's on your list and that one's not or anything like that uh this was just ones that may specifically mean a lot to me for a certain reason um you know i'm not saying that this artist or that artist are by far the the greatest cover artists of all time yeah. um so looking at my top 10 uh, i start with jim lee um I, I love his work. I absolutely love his Batman. I think he is probably my favorite Batman. So it's kind of funny as I got my list made out that he was number 10. Mm -hmm. But I absolutely love his Batman work um, going through Hosh and everything and his X-Men, his Magneto. Um, he has a lot of covers going up in my childhood that really were my turning point as superheroes. Yeah. So I, I got Jim Lee at number 10. Number nine is Alex Ross. Um, his work is phenomenal. He paints his covers. Uh, it's actually done in canvas and paint. Um, the big thing with him is detail. And I absolutely love my, my go-to one is Silver Surfer. I think his Silver mm -hmm. Surfer is amazing. 
It's really alien looking. He's very mirror based. Um, there is a cover I just found of his that I, I'm going to have to try to hunt down for my personal collection that is Thor and it looks great. And Thor is angry and he's got the hammer back. And when you look in Thor's like helmet, you see the reflection of Silver Surfer coming at him. And that like blows you out of the water. And it's painted. Like, it's like, it's like not even, yeah. it's like, yeah, yeah. It boggles yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. And, and his detail work is incredible in it. Um, so my only problem with Alex sometimes is he, he draws them to be real and there are flaws in them. And it's like, it's funny because I, of course I'm a big Batman fan. I cannot stand Alex Ross's Batman. I hate it. I don't like his Batman work at all because he's too flawed. Um, but he, so to me, Silver Surfer is phenomenal. It's my favorite mm-hmm. uh, that he does. Uh, so after that is Frank Miller. Uh, obviously, he's Daredevil work. Daredevil 182 is such an iconic cover. Um, I absolutely love it. I um, I love Robocop. It's my like all time favorite movie. I love the series. I love his work on on um, Robocop and Robocop's covers. Uh, so I, I love Frank Miller. His Batman stuff is phenomenal. I actually uh, have a, a seen collection of dk3 uh covers and i cannot stop buying them it's an addiction that i'm not proud of i like i swear i'm gonna stop i don't i, I don't need these they made so mm-hmm. many variants to that and every time i turn around i buy another one i can't help it so uh frank miller uh is number where am i at i have to count back he's number eight. eight uh number seven i go to larry hama for my gi joe love uh his covers are um I don't know. There's something catching about them. They're always uh, very actiony, and they always uh, generally have a reflection of what's going on in the book. And it was great as a kid. It always sucked me right in. You know, you, you saw a Storm Shadow or Snake Eyes on the cover, and something exciting was happening. Mm-hmm. Um, so Larry Hammond's work, uh, I just always loved. Uh, and then I go to number, <clears throat> excuse me, number six is uh, Adam Kubert. Um, I love his work and really the biggest one that got me my favorite cover of his, I, I put it up here in the background. Uh, I got this signed at Boston comic-con is his infinity, his yes. Thanos to me, that's Thanos. You know, everybody has their image. And I honestly, I have a problem with Thanos in the MCU because I feel like he is too human. He looks and some things. His eyes are so human versus Thanos is, is above an alien thanos is almost godly in nature he's it's terrifying how far he's above you know our species um and in the movies they just didn't really capture that for me and i love adam kubert's thanos it is his eyes aren't really human they're almost like you can almost see space in them they're glowing and they're bright and uh he he captures thanos for me so i could not i could not have uh a list without him in, in it so and I agree with you about the whole uh, MCU uh, Thanos. To me, when I saw him, like when they did the, like that that post scene, post credit scene with For him, it was he looked a little bit more towards what I would yep. like him to see. And then they went Agreed. to him and had more like a human head with a, with a, with the lines in his chin. And it was like he was a big, big, big body, but he had this tiny little head. And it's like you no, know, his whole body, the whole thing is big, and yeah, his massive. head is huge. It almost should be like like a football player like it should be like his shoulders are like he has on that cover uh mm. and the cool thing about that infinity series is that each cover was basically black with one color on it black and white with one color on it for each of the stones or the yep. gems and so it's like that's pretty cool that too is like that one was the you know there's the blue and there's a the yellow and that whole series mm-hmm. we talked about that series before that whole series is freaking amazing it's um, phenomenal I, I meant to say this at the beginning, uh, but I'm just remembering this now when we mentioned that, that I wanted a little note for the last one we did, which is the story arcs. I haven't put it into my list yet, but I have to push it into that list of the top 10 story arcs is the original Old Man Logan uh, run. Um, in it, it, like Literally, I read it's that this past week, and I, it was one of those comic books that I like. I read, I read my comic books before I go to bed. And it was like, I don't want to go to bed. I want to continue reading this. This is over. And it was absolutely amazing. So I just wanted to throw that out there because I know we talked Very about nice. that, that Infinity series uh, during our story arcs. But Old Man Logan original series uh, back in the Wolverine Volume 3 was amazing. So great list. I like it. Um, what I will say is it won't ruin the top of it is I had Lee and Miller in my honorable mentions. Um, they Miller, honestly, up until about 15 minutes before we went press record, I actually had Miller in my list. Um, but there was one person that I thought could give some credit for. So this list to me could have been 10 or 11, 12 people long. 
Uh, I have a huge honorable had, mention to talk about after. <laughs> but because you mentioned those already, I will tell you they're not in my list, but they they should be in a sense. Um, but I, I will say when I get to that person, a little bit reason, you know, they do deserve some credit. And I thought they should be pushed up. So my number 10 is uh, Charlie Adler, who has drawn basically every Walking Dead issue since uh, issue seven. Uh, wow. And I just, I don't know, there's something about his drawing and something about his, uh, well, part of, part of it's also something about the consistency of when you read a comic book uh, from cover mm -hmm. to, to the back of the cover that's the same every time. It's a continuation. And if the artist changes, I've read comic books before where you wow. get to issue 10 and the cover artist or the interior artist has changed and they, they look different. And I just don't like yep. it. It's like, no, it's it not the person it. that I saw. Yeah. So, so something I give respect to, he makes people look comic bookish, and, and, you know, and I understand your, the whole idea what you said about Alex Ross, uh, that Adler gives you that real life human but also that it's a comic book still so their faces are more long and more square jaws mm -hmm. and things like that which is pretty cool uh number nine uh it's my love for spawn the only other person to ever want to do spawn ever again would be greg capolo um tom nice. mcfarland's a great spawn artist but like if anybody can't do it that he doesn't do it it's his he should do it so um greg uh for the spawn covers he does uh john ramita jr's number um Number eight, I think that he took a lot from his dad. I just think he's better than his dad. Um, and he did a lot of Spider-Man stuff. So it's like, I, at the end of this, you realize that a lot of the issue, the, the people that I love for for artists all had a touch on Spider-Man, which is kind of cool, uh, and all took their nice. own take on Spider-Man. Um, That's cool. And the name that actually pushed this list around to make me put Frank Miller, which is really weird, out of this thing is uh, Sarah Pacelli. Uh, I think she is uh, up and coming. In a sense, she's been around for a while, but she's done a great different Spider-Man covers. Uh, she's done a bunch of different Spider-Man interiors. I think she's unbelievable as an artist. And I think one of the things that we look, think about in this industry, we just mentioned the before. I think before we refresh record about women being in your being in your store and, and being involved yes. with comic books, it, it, it helps with <laughs> having someone who is a female who kicks ass at drawing uh, and can do those covers and interiors like someone like Sarah does. Uh, she's at it's number awesome. seven. I'm gonna have to look number up her work. It's awesome. I don't recognize your name. That's great. And number six is again a last minute, like it's literally up to the buzzer beater here. I pushed him out of my top five, but it's George Perez. Um, George Perez has been a love of mine for a long time. Uh, I love how he draws Thanos, like you mentioned uh, uh, yeah. earlier, and, and about your um, uh, your number six, yeah, Adam. Number six, yep, Adam Cooper. I love how George Perez draw drew uh, Thanos in the Infinity Gauntlet, Infinity War series. Uh, yeah. And then I met George Perez again, like you said at the top, my personal list, that's your list. This is my list. I will tell you when someone's lines and sh look better is when you meet the person and they're an awesome human being <laughs> like yeah. that also adds to a point how much I love someone's art. So, uh, so George Perez and his, like this, the Infinity series uh, and his, his version of Thanos, I love. He did a lot of like new Teen Titans for DC. And like we mentioned, a lot of back and forth. A lot of these artists did do both. Um, but George Perez dropped that in my top five, but there's a couple of reasons in there that we'll get to uh, with my top five. So George Perez is at number six for me. His Wonder Woman work was phenomenal. Oh yeah, and, like I said, and that's one of those <clears throat> things. And that's the difference with me and the DC Marvel thing is that there's never been a problem with me and DC's art versus Marvel's art. Like yeah. I think the artwork is, is on par at both locations. It, to me, was the storylines and the character development and all that stuff that made me fall in love with Marvel over DC. But there's artists that had, like you mentioned, Frank Miller's probably art worth with DC was way better than his art with Marvel in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, but, I can probably argue with it. Um, but people can say the opposite. George Perez, again, he did a bunch of new Teen Titans and all that stuff. He did some stuff. I think he did some Batman. Um, but like he's done a lot of good stuff with DC that was excellent. But it's the artist, not the story. He's just drawing what these storylines should be. So it's not like right. um, I could ever fault someone for drawing for DC because, you know, got to get a paycheck somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, it's funny, too, because you talk about the attachment to people. And John Romita Jr. is not on my list because I went to his booth no less than five times at Boston Comic Con, and never yep. once actually got to chat with him, get an autograph. I was the next person in line, and uh, they put up a buzzer thing, and they're like, "Yeah, so he's uh, he's sketching now." And I'm like, "I've been in line for like an hour. Like, come on, man." <laughs> so uh, I, you know, he was no way. I mean, sure, you there was tons of people. You didn't recognize me after being here five times. Like Jason Aaron recognized me. Come on, man. 
But that's the so, thing. It's like, so I met George Perez at a small Comic Con, no bigger than Bangor's Comic and Toy Con, uh, in uh, right outside of Haverhill, Massachusetts, North North Shore, Massachusetts, at a um, like armory, like some sort of small rinky dink Comic Con. Uh, and I met um, Arthur Soda, S- Soydan, who did the uh, Marvel Zombies. Uh, very okay, yeah. covers he did the yep. ones that were players on old covers i have a bunch of those covers too so he's in my honorable mention as well um but he um he was unbelievable he's like buy two prints i'll sign whatever you want and i ended up buying four prints from him i bought he did a, a realistic like art from the walking dead tv show nice so i bought those i had those on the wall for the longest time but 40 bucks ready 40 dollars for a sketch in front of you from George Perez, he drew me Thanos in front of me with Sharpie and signed every book I had. So you could bring a long box. He'd sign the whole thing, 40 bucks. That's amazing. Like, that that is incredible. Was like, okay, this guy is real. Yeah. Then you go to the next booth over and it was a, it was a photo with, um, crap, who played TV's Batman? Um, uh, Adam West. Adam West. 80 bucks for a photo. Yeah. And then it was like 60 bucks for his autograph. I'm like, is his autograph worth $60? Like he's a famous person, but like sixty bucks for his autograph. So, as a kid, um, I would go to my father's house, and my father had cable, which I didn't have at home, uh, and I would watch the old '66 Batman, and that was the first Batman I ever knew. And then Batman the Animated Series started shortly after that. So when I was going to Boston Comic Con, Adam West was scheduled, and I think I yelled like a little like teenage girl, like I'm gonna be Batman. And then he, uh, he, he sadly uh, was diagnosed with cancer yes. and he passed away shortly after and I didn't get to meet him. Um, so I would have been, uh, I would have been stoked to get out of my And I got a photo of him from a distance, so. but to me, it was like, again, and that's the reason we've had this conversation. I've had this conversation with Jay Cochran and the guys from yep. Comic-Con when we were on their live stream about how it changes how, your perception of someone when you meet them and get to know Very them. And, 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 and you realize that, George Perez doesn't have a retirement from Marvel or DC. No. He doesn't have no. royalties as much as like, Adam West has still has royalties and he was still acting at the time. That's the problem I had. Oh, he yeah. was still on yeah, he, was he still had recurring on, roles on Family, family Guy. Yeah. And so it was like to me, it was like, okay, man, this guy over here is like literally trying to make a living for his retirement. Yeah. And he's charging me 40 bucks to sketch in front of me, an actual yeah. drawing. And he's in a sign. He signed like, I only, I think I brought like five books with me, but he signed all five books. Still signed five books. And it was like, everybody else is like 20 bucks a book. And it's like, okay, this guy is, and for that point on, he draws amazingly too. So that doesn't hurt. It's just incredible. Uh, His art's incredible. But that also made him go like a little bit further up because he was also a cool person. And he doesn't do cons anymore. He, he's not like, I think he was supposed to do like his last cons in 2020. And then he's getting older and sick, more sickly. Yeah. And so I think he's done. So that's also another cool thing for me is like, I've got the sketch I got, you know, five or six years ago and he's never going to do it again. Yeah, that's, cool. it. So, that's it. That's it. That's cool. Well, let's hear uh, your number five here. That's good. So number five for me is somebody that it, <clears throat> it, I, I don't know if I've ever talked about this. I have a list, an ongoing list of things because I own the store now and it's, uh, it's, a, it's a challenge because I'm a, collector and there's you know mm-hmm. a, a million things that could walk through the door that'd be like oh i would love to have this but i had to say okay for the for the well-being of the store i can't keep everything and i made a list of the things that i absolutely must have and one of his books is on my list is neil adams uh batman number 227 i i absolutely love this cover it is uh a phenomenal cover if it ever walks through this door it will be mine uh i'm would love to collect all of the homages of it, everything. Um, I love Neil Adams' work. Uh, so if you don't know the cover, it is a uh, it's Batman and he's kind of like in the moon. And it's almost like I don't know to me, it seems like old school horror, like an old school back like 40s, 50s horror movie. Um, and it's a castle, and there is I think it's I can't remember, it's the hounds. And there's a girl running towards you, running away, and this guy's chasing her with these dogs. And in the background, up over the castle is Batman, you know, knowing that he will, he's going to get this guy, he's going to be the hero, he's going to get it all. Um, so that is like the most iconic thing to me. I absolutely love that cover. Um, I love Neil Adams' work. I still, uh, to this day, have some Neil Adams in my collection of the newer mm-hmm. stuff. 
um, that comes out. Uh, so Neil Adams is my number five for being such a, uh, a huge iconic piece to me for Batman. So, and if anybody's like, if you're listening to this, obviously I'm glad you're described it. Cause it's definitely, you know, you described it pretty well. If you're watching this on YouTube, which I recommend everybody subscribe and watch on YouTube. I'll have a picture of that up on the screen too. So you can see it. Um, uh, his number five for Neil Adams. Was it two Batman 227? You said 227, which if I, if I could, it would be right here right now. Yeah, exactly. I'd be happily showing it off. So Someday my number five is a little obscure for most people. I don't know if most people know this person's name. Um, but to me, it was back in 2015 uh, during that Marvel, um, the Secret Wars time where they were kind of rebooting and doing a lot of number ones again, uh, that yep. I fell in love with this specific cover. And I, in my mind, I was like, again, I'm more of a novice. I was collecting a little bit, but I was like just be getting into collecting diehardness like within a couple mm. of years later. Um, it was like, it wasn't until like 2017 where I like dove feet first into collecting where I'm at your shop every week and all that stuff before yep. it was like, uh, I knew I was living in Massachusetts and Newberry comics had like half off Marvel. It was like two, three months of half off all Marvel covers. And I was like, okay, I can get a $2 comic book. This hell yeah. I'll, I'll start collecting. <laughs> and I yeah. fell in love with this cover. And then I realized that most of the series he did, it wasn't until more recently that most of the series, he also did the covers for that are, amazing and that's michael right. del mundo and he did the covers for carnage number one. Oh yes with Beautiful the one. it's carnage's face and the railroads in between it and then i also have now uh, i purchased on ebay is carnage number nine in this series uh which uh, the reason i love them is because it's more like um who did this the new recent spider-man covers that are really popular um do you know um uh, the carnage it, one recently yeah, i'll figure I it out it was, was it paul gleason Something like, I don't remember. It sounds familiar. It sounds right. But whatever, it's like more like lines and webbing and, and spider yeah. webs. Whereas the same thing with these two comic books, it's like, it's obviously the symbiote, uh, you know, in there uh, making the face around the railroad tracks and the like mine shaft. And the same thing here, it's a lot more bubbles and lines and something like clean drawn. Yeah. There was something about it drew me to it. It was like, he can make something out of nothing in a sense. And it's like, it's Carnage's face that's supposed to be a wave swallowing this thing. It's Carnage's face supposed to be a mine shaft. And it's like, as you know, Carnage is one of my favorite villains. And yep. so it just all made me fall in love with this. One of these days I'm going to have Jay, I think, tattoo this uh, Carnage number one on one of my shoulders. Nice. On the top of it and the, you know, the mine shaft would be down here. I think that would be cool. So Michael that's Del cool. Mundo became one of my favorite artists uh, by just literally this one issue was one of my favorite. I own two copies of it. They're not worth anything. I just was like, I need two copies of this. I need to put one yeah. so they're in the order, one through whatever, and I need the, <laughs> I need the other one so I have it on display. Uh, That's awesome. And, and so Michael Delamondo probably isn't on a lot of people's top ten lists, uh, yeah. but I realized that he makes he does a couple different art uh, covers for people, and I absolutely fell in love with it. So Michael Delamondo is number five for me. So I can at least say I, I immediately recognize the cover. Yeah, so, and that's yeah, the thing is, I think awesome. it's also yep. one of the things. I think as we get into our top fives, the like you just mentioned the the Neil uh, Neil Adams one to to one. I think a lot of these people are now going to get to the point where you're going to recognize who these people are by their art, not yeah. by their name. Yeah, and I had a hard time with this list. I had so many covers in my mind that I have in my personal collection. I absolutely love, and I realized that I collect covers a lot of them uh, based on subject matter. Yeah. So I'd go and I love this cover. And I, and I thought it was another artist because I'm like, well, it looks a lot like this artist. And I looked and be like, oh, that's not them. And then I looked for more art by this person. And this might be the only cover they really did that yep. made any impact or anything. So I'm like, well, I, I, you can't really try to put them on a list for one cover, right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, so it was really hard. I had a hard time with this. Um, so anyway, so going on to my number four is, um, and I mentioned him uh, previously in uh, our discussion, I think on story arcs, is Tim Sale. Um, Tim Sale, I love his work. I love he does. How do you want to say it? He he creates a lot with very little, um, and that's why I love his Batman work. Because to me, Batman, uh, I love when he's he's sort of faded into the shadows. Um, so you go through Long Halloween, and there's all of these little touches of uh, of Batman characters and stuff, but it all surrounds the holidays. And mm -hmm. I love how you he takes that and sort of wraps it into the Batman story, but then there's it's almost hidden in there, here and there. 
Um, so I, I absolutely love Tim Sale's work. Um, I love his Batman. I love Daredevil Yellow, Spider-Man Blue. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I am attracted to his covers. They're, um, they're simplistic. There's something about them that aren't heavily, heavily detailed, but leave a lot to that imagination. And I love his work. So, uh, so I had to go number four on my list being Tim Sale. And so it's great how you mentioned Long Halloween because didn't they just cast voices for the new movie of animated film that's coming out with Which Batman will, the Long Halloween? I will be stoked to see. I know. My so like, if I mean, you listen have, to the story arc episode, it's one of it's one of uh, Paul's favorite story arcs of all time. Yes, too, it so. is. I have a I have a six foot. Give you an idea. I have a I think it's six foot shelf at home that my trades are on, and one entire six foot shelf of Batman. That's how many Batman trades I have, and. Uh, in of all of them long halloween is my favorite well and that's the thing so So we mentioned batman this is cool i like this idea we haven't got to our full list yet but the cool thing i will mention in this middle part here as we get to uh, my number four is it seems like what's pretty cool is you are defining the cool people who drew batman like you get batman mentioned a couple of times right looking at my list it more or less is yeah and if you look at mine it's the people who drew spider-man and so as we get through this list, it's like I just looking at the couple of people that, you know, have drawn you know, John Romita Jr., Sal Bricelli. Like it's, it's, it's that aspect of if you draw the character, this character well, then I'm going to say, okay, if you can do a badass yeah. cover with Spider-Man, if you can do a badass cover with Batman, you can do okay. It's yeah. not this obscure, if you made this obscure comic book, no one knows what this character looks like. You just created it. If you're a good artist, you can make it look good. But if you can make, like, I know what Carnage looks like. So Michael Zamunda's version of Carnage, I'm like, okay, you kick ass making you know, yeah courage. so yeah cool In, inventing that. this character in another way number four for me is one you've already mentioned it's alex ross so i i fought 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 to push him like i i the reason you said about the realisticness and all that stuff to push him further down the list so that it's closer to 10 um because of the fact that i feel like this doesn't sound mean but painting doesn't belong in comic books not in a sense, like it, not. And it sounds, I don't like that you're gonna clip that out and say that is the the, the quote from Justin here on this podcast. But <laughs> is that She's it's not what I expect? Person. What I expect at a comic book, so if that makes any sense. Very like different. you expect very pencil, the- you expect inks, you expect those things. Yeah. You don't expect painting. And so, but every time I look at one of his covers, I'm like, damn, this guy can do it. Like Beautiful. he makes it happen. So like House of M. Who is the art? Is the art I have it right here. Yeah. So House of Ben's cover, I can't, I don't have it here. It looks like Alex Ross. It, 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 it looks Very like an Alex much. Ross, Yeah. but Alex Ross is better. And that's my point. So it's like it, you have that painting-esque um, of Alex Ross who has that painting version, but he just does it far better and i wish it's like funny like i mentioned that i have comics i have my five through one i have a comic book cover of everybody but alex ross yeah so he makes it he makes it look realistic like damn this guy could pay me a painting for my wall i will buy a oh. alex ross painting Can you imagine but how amazing to, that would be <laughs> but to me it's like okay there's a reason why he's a, it's that weird spot number four alex ross is so good at his immortal hulks covers are amazing his captain america covers mm-hmm. have been amazing um more recently and he's a badass artist so i had to put him in my top five but reason like i said i i want to push him further up to 10 or whatever to six or seven because i don't just don't expect that when i see a comic book art it's like i want to see that inks i want to see those lines i want to see that that fakeness like make it look real but also fake because it is a comic book and yeah. um, it, it's part of me that's just, like i said is that that in the middle thing so but his art is so dang good that i had to put him in number four i couldn't i i, I you know maybe he could swipe with my like in the long term like years later probably would switch to the five and michael del mundo becomes my number four he probably could be switched right now uh, but I, like i said alex ross is such a, an amazing cover artist that i just i, I, I it, he had to be in my top five so his, alex his ross is number four his work's incredible. It really is. And, and for anybody who is watching this, if you look around in the background, there are hidden uh, covers from some of my lists. So if you are watching, I tried to tuck them in here and there in the background. So. And they're all for sale. So at uh, Hammond Street in Bangor, <laughs> make an I'm offer. I'm really disappointed if they show up because I got to tell you, these are all for my personal collection. I say, if you show up, if you, if you, but if you say this podcast, if you show up, I want to cut up whatever sales they get. <laughs> Uh, uh, all right, so my number three 
is uh, Gabriel Del Otto. He's been very, very big in the scene recently. Um, his his realism that is we as we're talking about Alex Ross, it, it, I feel like it's very realistic. But then he mixes that comic in it so mm-hmm. well that you're getting a good blend of the two. Um, I I love his work on Spider Man. Uh, Gabriel Delgado Spider Man is phenomenal. So that is why uh, he is my number three. Um, it, every time I see his work, it's just like mind blowing. Love his stuff. So that is why uh, I've got Gabriel Delgado number three. I was trying to look up. I was while you were doing that, I wanted to see who uh, drew, drew the cover for. Uh, I feel like House of M. <laughs> I feel like it was a uh, an artist that I would not be able to pronounce their name if I remember correctly. I could be completely okay, wrong. So uh, let's see here. Let's see, we come up with hard to find. Illustrated. Okay, the book itself was illustrated by Oliver Copelli Capalia. Uh, yeah, it doesn't have the art. I just, for me, I, I just was like bothering me. It's on the, co- it's probably on the list of names. I just don't know which one's like, the, the, which one's the cover art. The only yeah. name I know on that entire list that I know what they did was Brian Michael Bendis. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but a good number three. I like that. I like your idea. Like I said, if, if, if for some reason I don't change what you do, Alex Ross, you're never going to hear this podcast, but if you ever did, don't change what you do. <laughs> but I do like you say about Gabriel Delato that he's got his realisticness to it, but also knowing it's a comic book. Like yeah, Ross paints it paints like he was painting a portrait of you and I. Yeah, he paints it just like that, and it's like, well, I kind of also want like, I love my MCU movies, but there's also this part where I read my books. I want them to be comic books. I want to lose myself in that world. Yeah, have that little bit of break, and it's just like you want them to be a little bit above, a little bit bigger and more, a little bit more cartoony in a sense, like not. And as I get into the top list, there's some reasons you'll, you'll hear my obviously my picks on that so number three for me jumped in 2020 to 21 jumped from number 10 on this list if i were to make it last year to number three wow all right ben bishop beautiful ben bishop so so ben uh, you know ben doesn't, doesn't have time to listen to my podcast anymore we, will and i were talking about this he's been on it multiple times but he's never had he's not gonna have time to listen to this so ben if you're listening awesome great work thank you um but i was talking to will last night in your shop and i mentioned to him that there's something about ben uh bishop that uh more recently again i think part of it has to do with what i mentioned with george perez meeting the person getting to know the person and knowing how awesome he is with his fans um but really, when I read Last Runner number two, so Last Runner number one, uh, he had one page. And I knew which page it was. You could not have to tell me. The second I got to that page, I was like, that's a Ben Bishop page. Nice. Um, and then I got issue two. And I'm flipping through that issue two. And every couple of pages, it was Ben's. And I was like, why didn't they just hire Ben to do this whole book? Nothing <laughs> against the, the brothers that do the rest of the book. I yeah. just think that Ben's lines in his comic books and on his covers, he doesn't use ink. It's pencil and then thicker pencil. And yeah. he has these thick lines that just make it, and he's got square jaws on his way he draws the turtles, his square jaws and the way he does it. I just, there's something about what he does that draws me in to his covers uh, and in his interiors. Um, Ben's going places. And I think that I, I got to give my, give a shout out to Ben he is amazing with his fans. Uh, he, he, I am part of his Bish kids. Um, uh, I won't lie. I do send him money every month. And a couple <laughs> weeks from now, I'll get a box from him that has a bunch of cool one-off stuff in it. Um, but that has nothing to do with what I think about his art. I think that the Ninja Turtles and IDW is stupid if they don't give him actual work in the future. I think that what he's been able to do with Last Ronin, uh, what he's been able to do with Kevin Eastman and, and Drawing Blood and his aggregate series, uh, it's awesome. just it, everything he does, it touches his goal. Because again, there's the way he draws. And I think there's something to say about someone who draws unique enough that I can notice it's his. Um, that if you think about all the artists that we've talked about either now or, or coming up in our top two or top three, most of those people are like, we can't, that drawing's not good enough for us. Like I guarantee you when he sent his stuff into Marvel, they're like, ah, your lines are too thick or your jaws are too square or, you know, you need to use ink, not just pencil. 
and the, but that's what's going to make him unique and different. Like you know, yep. it, it's it's that aspect that I'm sure there's probably a story where Alex Ross sent his art into somewhere, and they're like, "No, you're sorry, yours is too realistic." Yeah, he got declined, and so there's something that's going to make it a standout. And this, there's a future for Ben. Uh, and if anybody hasn't read The Last Ronin, like it is some of the best comic book work, writing and artwork from both Ben and I forget that there's just, I think they're. There's two brothers that do the other artwork um, on the thing, but th th the whole thing is amazing. And it's honestly became bad luck because the guy who was originally supposed to do the flashbacks couldn't do it because of the delay of the comic book. And that's how Ben got the role of doing it. Cause Kevin Eastman gave him a, like a little shout out and said, you should have Ben do it. Um, and it's probably made it to the point where he's not, he's too busy for, I mean, anything he's doing now <laughs> because of his work on last Ronin and all that stuff. So Ben Bishop became a number three, this is my last Ronin number uh, two uh, variant with his sketch uh, there on it. It's this That's is awesome. proudly displayed in my books, and I will always be happy to read and, and, and look at a Ben Bishop cover uh, or interior. Uh, again, I, I look at it. If anybody's read last Ronin number two, you can tell which pages are his and which pages are someone else's, and there's something about it. So I'll, I'll stop fanboying over my boy Ben. Um, if you're listening to this podcast or watching it, he's been on twice, uh, go back and listen to his episodes. He'll hopefully be on again soon to talk last Ronin. Um, but Ben is a uh, number three for me. That's awesome, man. Awesome. And, and I absolutely love Ben's work. It's phenomenal. Shout out. Uh, going to my number two. Oh, Hey, cheers. We're drinking the same beer, by the way. Mm -hmm. Uh, so a little bit about my beer drinking. Um, I have had 500. <laughs> a little bit about my beer drinking. I am not an alcoholic. <laughs> I'm not an alcoholic, but I have had, uh, I have had somewhere around 500 different beers from around the world. Yeah. I, I, I used to tell you this. I, I'm a, I collect everything. I can't help it. I'm a beer collector. That's why um, I'm not doing Pokemon cards, man. <laughs> Come on, get in on this. You know, you want to. You're just um, trying to get more money out of me. <laughs> uh, so I, I have had, uh, just tons of beer, different beers all around the world, different beers. And I got to tell you, so, um, so everything, every little thing, this new one that you guys have made up at OBC, I have to say is probably going to be my, my favorite beer. This is amazing. It's dangerous. It is so like, good. It's so amazing. And it's something that it, we keep on. When I brought it to you, as I brought you a, what, a can, Yep. Uh, usually, I have, usually I swing by every couple of weeks to Paul's shop, uh, buy some comic books, throw them a four pack of cans. Um, and this week, thank I was you, like, Colton. Thank you, Colton, for the four pack. And so he gave you a four pack. Yeah. So I was like, I can't. And it was funny because I'm glad I didn't bring a four pack because he would have uh, brought you would have had eight cans. And I'm like, we don't have a not that we don't have a ton, but it's like this beer is gonna fly. Like this beer is so good. People are going to so love it good. so much. And then, uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, not that Paul's not worth it. it it's just, it was like, I got to, I'll bring a can. Uh, Cause I only yeah. brought two cans home for me. So usually I don't have a four pack. Um, but uh, I tell you what, it's on draft at Orno Brewing Company in Orno. And I get a shift pint at the end of my shift every week and, or every night. And I will be drinking that a lot because it's unbelievable. So you can That's get amazing. it at your local stores, not the shout That's out amazing. to OBC. Uh, but yes, so I'm glad you're drinking that. Cheers. Oh, every Cheers. Little, every little comic book counts. <laughs> that's right. It does too. At one point, we'll do oh. a Galactic Comics beer, right? Yeah, that's the goal. Galactic, galactic beer, man. We need it. This is, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this is phenomenal. This is amazingly so good. good. And, I, and shout out to Bissell because of the Bissell glass. I will give Bissell credit. We love Bissell. Yep. I got my Bissell glass going. Maddie, rocking Maddie it out. Robinson, tasting uh, general manager of uh, Bissell, was on the podcast. Good friend of mine. So. I love Bissell beer. It's it's fantastic. But it's this is too. I I think out of out of over five hundred beers, this may be my it's, my favorite. It is it is incredible. It is yes. so good. Um, and you guys actually have my second. What was my favorite that you made uh, back when you first opened? Um, and I am never going to pronounce the name of it right. Pocatello, Pocatello, po so, Pocatello. You're it's Pocatello. one of my favorite beers that we've ever made. It will never, never be made it again. again. <laughs> it will never be made again. And it was it was so good. Oh my god. It was god. so good, yeah. I every time I get to, to nerd out about beer, I talk about that beer. It was like the greatest beer of my life, and I'll never have it again. It's terrible. By um, the way, Colton, Colton's gonna love the fact that you mentioned his name on this podcast. All right, Colton. You know that Thanks, he listens man. to the podcast and he's gonna like he's gonna he told me he wants credit last time. I mentioned him on the podcast uh with uh I forget who it was. A couple of weeks ago, I did a podcast that I mentioned him on it, and he was like, 
dude, am I get credit for me? You mentioned my name on it. Do I get royalties? I'm like, yeah, the second I get paid, I'll let you have some money. So Colton, you get me some sponsorships. I'll pass along some money for mentioning your name on it. Yeah, I like that plan. It's a good deal. But, All right, back to comics. Now yes, we've exactly. Your beer, beer podcast. Uh, so my number two, I have it back here, is Francesco Mattina. Yes. His work is phenomenal. If you are not familiar with his work, and I'm going to tell you right now, go look at Spawn. His Spawn stuff is incredible. It's amazing. Um, it, it, it draws you in. Uh, it's it's sort of, I don't know, there's something about it that's sort of a little horror base. There's a lot of yep. dark in it. Um, his Batman. There was a Francesca Mattina uh, Batman collection I had when I first opened Galactic Comics. Uh, in, it was from the Metal series. Mm-hmm. And the covers like drew me in, and I, I absolutely loved them. I had the uh, the virgin, and I had the black and white. And one day I said, "You know what? These have been up for about a week or so. And they hadn't sold yet, uh, and the store was I mean it was small. I was working on my office in my home, and I said, "I'm going to keep those. That's going to be my first. You know, I'm going to pay myself." And I went downstairs that morning and opened up the system, and there they were sold. And I was like, "Damn it!" There they went. But Francesco Mattina's work is incredible. His Batman stuff is amazing. Uh, I, I cannot say uh, enough about his Spawn work. Um, the, the colors, the contrast, the darks, the greens, everything he does is, is just amazing work. Um, and, of course, so, you know, a little bit. My I think we talked about this in Villains, right? and I don't list him as a villain, but my favorite is Magneto. Yeah. So the Magneto cover on there, and this is the Venomized version with him choking out Spider-Man. Um, and so I will say, yes, uh, you know, there's three people that are allowed to draw Spawn in my, my book. It's Todd McFarlane, Craig Capolo, Francisco. They, they, those are the people allowed to draw Spawn. No one else is allowed to draw Spawn. <laughs> it, 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 there's something about it. But yes, I agree completely with your number two. I love it. It's awesome. I'm love, dude, Spawn's got some love on this podcast today. I, I, tell time. you what, it, I'm happy about that because... Spawn has been was like one of the original characters that I like to follow a lot. It was one of the original ones that I was so proud to have number one, um, and so on. So I tell you what, uh, Paul, you know I would love to collect the black and white copies of Spawn. I don't know what's going on there, <laughs> but um, I might have to go to the other comic book shop in Bangor. Oh, that's um, terrible. So Ryan, if you're listening to this, Ryan, if you follow the podcast from Galactic Comics. There's another person that would like to have one of these black and whites. If you can fork one over, I'll have to talk to him and say, "Come on, man, can you can you hook and Justin he, up?" Black and whites. Uh, they are exclusive stores. I, don't there's something. Don't th- th- here's my thought on this. And you talked about the covers of, or, or for, for Francisco, and we talked about Greg Capullo and all that stuff. It's like there's something about, and then as we get into number white nine two, number two, number one, it's there's something about um simplicity and i don't know I, there's something about sure. how much i love spawn honestly i would love for them to do an animated spawn con- uh, tv show that on hbo or hulu or whatever that was just black and white i know I there's that. like well, uh, my all-time favorite robocop yeah and i feel like a lot of the robocop flaws in the comics have been there's too much color in them yep the robocop i would love to see sin city style black yep. white and one color here and there you know the the blue blood. and the red light of the wall from the from the police car the gunfire, you know, blood, blood, something, just those basic things. Um, and Spawn, Spawn, the best thing of him is when you don't see him. Yep. The billowing cape, that little bit of red on the edge, uh, those glowing green eyes that are terrifying from the corner, you know. Those scenes of Spawn are the ones that get you. You're like, oh, yeah. And that, that's my thing with Batman. I want to see less yep. of Batman, not more of him. Correct. Yes, you know, exactly. Fades into the shadows, this, you know, creature of the night, the the avengeful things I was watching. So we're going to do a great little segue in here to my number two. All right. Todd, Todd McFarlane. So Todd McFarlane, uh, I'll say it right now, is the best person to ever draw Spider-Man. Is the best person to ever draw Spawn. Um, my thought was to put, put Spawn covers to be my description, my thing, but I went with uh you know first venom cameo first venom in costume uh you know 299 298 spawn covers from beck and marvel uh i would have loved for him to stay with with marvel 
uh, obviously as a big Marvel fan, but because he left Marvel, we got Spawn. So I will say there's a better good things to happen over years. Um, I just love because Spider Man is not a real person, right? Yes. <laughs> so he's not a human being. He's not like he's a human being in the Marvel universe, but he's not real. And so the way that he was able to make him contort into different spots that he wasn't allowed to do originally um, made him more superhero to me, made him more unrealistic to me, but also kept him in the world because of the storylines because of how he was still a high school student and so on and so forth. Um, there was something about him that, that drew me into him. I've talked about it in my top story arcs. I've talked it in my favorite villains. Tom McFarlane sucks at writing. I'll just say it out loud. He's not good at writing comic books. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. He's not good. I, I, it's so hard. I, I love the storylines behind oh. Spawn. Like if you give me a synopsis of Spawn, and I was explaining what Spawn was to yes. a person. Love it. Him actually writing speech bubbles <laughs> and actually getting, trying to get continuity through a comic book. It's All horrible. It's, it's like pulling it's teeth to try to read it. Struggle. It's such a struggle in the early stuff. But he draws, and he, the way he draws, and the way he draws Spawn, I don't think Spawn could be Spawn without the way that Todd McFarlane drew him in the first place. It's because he's not a real person. I, so Todd McFarlane at one time was my number one for the longest time. Um, there, There's just some way I like his lines and the way he draws Spider-Man, the way he draws Spawn, uh, the way he draws his villains in Spawn and all those things. So um, there was a break, and it honestly hurt sales of Spawn for a while there that Todd stopped doing artwork for Spawn altogether, didn't do the variant covers, didn't do any covers or whatever. And they're the hardest comic books to find because they're no one bought them. They're insanely rare. They're insanely <laughs> because, rare. Because there was like five issues ordered. It. Like last, if you would order, like, I'll order a call. Do you want Spawn? I'll get you one issue. That's it. We're not going to get any more because I'm not going to sell yeah. it. And so there's that like Spawn 170 or something like that, all the way up to 270, where he didn't oh, yeah. touch it. And um, some of the writing was better when he had other people writing. Um, but there's Todd McFarlane will always be there. And, and you know, and we're not talking overall top people who have impacted comic book history, but Todd McFarlane has a stamp on this industry. Um, oh, by far. He has a stamp yeah, no on question sculptures and statues and, and figurines and yep. comic books and image. Marvel, sports stuff. Sports stuff. I have a collection Herbal of sports McFarlane fan, we know that. Figures. Yep. He was the one that epitomized hockey figurines, like there's or, or yeah. sports figurines. If you go buy a basketball, hockey, football figurine, and in all likelihood, it came from Mark Farland toys. Like it's it's and if it didn't, it's not very high quality. No, exactly. If you want a realistic looking thing, it came from that. So and I'm looking forward to the future of what spawn the spawn universe and, and all those things he's gonna be able to do with this stuff. I can't wait for the new spawn movie to come out. So I, I just to me it's always this Tom McFarland could never do wrong. Um he did wrong because he's dropped a spot in my list over the years. But there's just something about the way he drew Spider-Man uh, and then how he drives Spawn that always has pulled me in um, to Todd McFarlane. So as much as I like Francisco's Spawn, as much as I like Greg Capullo's Spawn, the number one Spawn draw artist of all time is obviously the creator, and that's Todd McFarlane. So funny thing, he wasn't on my list because I don't really like his Marvel work. <laughs> and that's okay. And that's the reason why he's not like, that's the reason why he was questioned all at the beginning. Yeah. There's something about it. And anybody watching can see this. There's something about the way that he can contort this body to look like that, that no one else was it before him. No one did that. It was yeah. a simple, like, Oh, his mechanics can't do that. He's a human being. It's like, well, he's also fake. <laughs> like, yeah. It, and you have to like, Spider-Man is like the most flexible being practically in, in, all of the universe right like he's crazy and that's that's a cool thing to spider-man that's why so when i was a hockey goalie yeah uh my mask was spider-man because okay yeah you, you know superman great he's you know fast and he's all this and that but spider-man he's so like agile right and he has that spider sense like find to maybe a better goalie than spider-man like you know i mean he, his agility and his crazy like moves and, and things he can change. So I do appreciate it. I'm going to tell you what, you, you uh, impact me enough that I'm going to have to go read Todd McFarlane's Spider-Man because. And here's the deal. You had Lee and Miller in your, your top 10 and I had him yep. in honorable mentions. I have no problem with Todd McFarlane at least moving into your honorable mentions and being in that spot saying, okay, he's a good artist. He's just not my top 10. Yep. Here's just, I, I think he broke some boundaries in a sense 
with the way that he was able to say, no, this guy is a superhero. He can stretch in different spots. He can move in different ways than anybody else can. Um, and that's what ultimately got him kicked, basically kicked out of Marvel. I mean, when he wanted to do his own thing and they yeah. ended up saying like, Oh no, 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 you can, you can write your own book. And I'm like, no, no. Why'd you let him do that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let him draw. There are definitely artists who are great writers. Uh, yeah. This is not a one track thing. Frank Miller, unbelievable yep. artist, unbelievable writer, but there's also some people that should stay in their lane. And I, in my opinion, yeah. create the storylines um and, and and you know else um, with robert kirkman doesn't draw walking dead right. if that makes any sense i yep. think he's one of the greatest writers of all time he's not gonna be he's not gonna try to art, do our work it's just not his thing so so i have recently uh made a very 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 poor life choice and have started personally collecting omnibus i was to say you opened a comic book store <laughs> No, that's hopefully going to be the best life choice here. <laughs> with the exception of marrying my wife, that she won't yes. listen to this. I can say right now, but I'll say that. All right. Besides marrying my wife, uh, we'll be opening the comic store. But I started collecting omnibus, so I will now have to go get. I believe there is a Todd McFarlane era Spider-Man omnibus, yep. and I will add to my personal collection and read this because you've inspired me for it. So um, before you get into, go ahead. Go ahead. I said, like, before you get to number one, I don't don't go into number one yet until I say something. But continue what you were saying. Okay. So, which you you inspired me previously. We discussed uh, story arcs and Civil War, and I made a uh, I made a horrible life choice with this omnibus collecting and saying, okay, I'm on a Civil War. Well, Civil War isn't an omnibus. It is actually a uh, it's a jacketed collection of all of the books, and they are like insanely scarce. Um. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna get this. And now that's a quest that I'm on only so I can have it and read it because I, I, I went back and reread stuff about Civil War. And they say that if you read all of it, it, it is so much deeper and, yep. and more to it than simply reading the trade because I read the trade. So I said, all right, I'm going to get the entire thing. But now you've got me on a quest to find that damn thing that I, I found one. Um, I found one it sold and, and it was for a decent amount of money. But I said, I'll spend that much. And I found one for sale. I, I put up a please. Anybody got this thing? And the guy came back to me. I'm like, holy crap. That's way more than I want to spend. <laughs> and and, and you're right about the whole Civil War yeah. thing, though, because like we mentioned on the storyline thing, you mentioned with, I think it was House of M or one of them mm -hmm. on the front lines. I'd love for Disney Plus to do a front lines, like an episode on TV about the journalist. Yeah. Um, uh, or the, you know. If it's something with EMT or something, someone in the background, but it's on the front line. Yeah, these people superhero. that are stuck dealing with all this. And that's um, what and Civil War on. had. That's what I think Secret Wars potentially had. There's a bunch of different yep. ones that they had these front lines. And reading, it's, it's Secret, uh, Secret Invasion. Um, Secret Invasion. There was these, yep. there's a lot that go into it, but it's worth it because I think, like you mentioned, um, you get the whole picture. And we mentioned during you our story arcs episode. You get that perspective of all of yep. it with those frontline books. And I'd be interested to see what Civil War is like on all of it. So I'm out yes. on a quest to find that. And now I'm going to have to add the Spider-Man Omnibus, which is, you know, collecting Omnibus, I got to tell you, um, that's probably <laughs> not the best life choice I've ever made. Um, I didn't realize they are, they are borderline print to order. So well, yes. um, they, there are not a lot of them to come by. Uh, they don't sit around. You can't get them once they're gone. They're out of print. And once they're out of print, they become an astronomical amount of money. Uh, so I am going to have to sell a kidney. I don't think I can <laughs> need two of them. We'll be fine. It um, was funny, though. I was in your shop a couple weeks ago, and someone was like, oh, I got to stop collecting cards. Just take it up too much space. I'm like, I'm looking at it, and I'm like, you obviously <laughs> don't collect comic books or trade paperbacks. <laughs> cards take up this much space. Comic <laughs> books are eight times the size i'm like yep. okay stop collecting cars then i'm like the <laughs> space um collecting omnibuses is probably a little bit more than both of those so it, it, thousand yeah, you're plus it. pages on yep. average yeah, yeah they're they're beefy but i love the uh i love that whole like the completeness being able to sit yep. there and just have all of it uh at my fingertips so yeah the omnibus collecting has started well, when you gave me that, and I'll tell you, I was in a text you a little while ago. I started, I, I downloaded um, uh, a digitally copy, copy on um, uh, Comixology or something like that for the long Halloween. And I think I did. Um, Thanks for your support. Dark Knight Risers. Uh, so, so here's the thing. It was like, I can't, 
I got to put money into where I want to, like, you know, like that. Yeah. Who, I, I mean, obviously, you're not a DC guy. Why would no, you I got to put money into I, where I want to spend money. And that's worth like me buying, you know, you text me every once in a while, like you did today. Hey, I've got this covered. You want this? I'd rather spend yeah. the money on that than something that I'm going to read once or just yeah. read to read uh, than collect. And so I was like, oh, so I, so I got it. I haven't read most of it yet, um, uh, but I've actually got it and started looking into it. Dark Knight Rises. Uh, stuff like that so i can at least get some some groundwork on that dc side i don't think it's gonna ever pull me completely over, turning him uh but uh i think him. it's i think it'd be to be a comic book fan you have to have a little bit of open open mind in general yeah, and uh, I, I mean this year was the first year i bought a boom comic book so it's like it's definitely opening me up to more um uh things like obviously right now i'm basically uh, marvel and image is my two main things yeah. at idw here and there for tmnt stuff but um but yeah, so I'll tell you, you know, these these things help. This is almost yep. like our um, uh, free, uh, uh, you know, talking to a psychiatrist here um, <laughs> to help us with our lives. Expand so, your horizons. The reason I want you to stop before you're number one is we both know where both of our number ones are, right? I mean, we have to think that we know. Where I don't think one you is don't here. mind. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> so what I was gonna say is instead of just saying it out loud, we'll let Paul, you get some time, and then I'll, we'll just go back and forth on this one. So guys. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. I'm guessing your number one is Scotty Young. My number one might be Scotty Young. Yeah. I, my number all, one is. I have is, one is, tattoo and it's Scotty Young. And my number one is Scotty Young. So we both Scotty. knew this was coming. Let's be honest here. If anybody follows this podcast, we are um, we are in the Scotty Young fan club. Like, let's be honest. So, <laughs> like, this is. Um, so what I'd like to do is, I mean, obviously this is cool. I'll spend some time talking back and forth on why, and why uh, or when, and I'll tell you a little bit of background on me is I hated when I would go to a comic book store. Uh, I'll be honest. I used to go to Jeff's at top shelf and nothing really against Jeff. This is not like a trash on Jeff thing. I went to yeah. Paul because I became friends with Paul. I wanted to support a new business. When I go in there, Paul has a conversation with me. Um, Paul's hours at Galactic were, turning to be better for me. Uh, I was working usually, I used to work like I can go to work for 10 on a Wednesday. Uh, when I was going to work at, a, at nine, I wouldn't work because Paul, uh, Jeff would open at nine and I couldn't get in there to get my comic books, but I'd also be there past, he'd close at six. So Wednesdays would suck for me. And I'm a big guy that like, I have to get my comic books on Wednesday. I got to do it. Um, I walk in there, I have my pull list from you, uh, but you see me look at the shelf. And there's sometimes yep. a, a comic book cover pulls me and draws me in, or you had ordered uh, a second order of the car, uh, carnage uh, cover. Uh, yep. that I was like, Oh, you got more of those. And so I got to be there on Wednesdays. If not, I'm going to lose out. So um, it hurt me a couple of times when I sent my wife to do a shop to, to pick up my books. Cause there was a couple of times there. I was like, Oh, you got just the pull list. Uh, but I go there and Paul, uh, or Jeff would pull um, the Scotty young cover uh, for me. Not on purpose, just because he ran out of the other covers, and I, I always wanted cover A, and I'd get Scotty Young's cover, and I'd be like, "God damn it! I wanted the real one. I wanted the actual <laughs> cover." And then a, a, a switch flipped on me. It, it became to the point where um, Scotty will always be. I don't know another person who will do a better cover for me. Um, and it's the child part of me. It's the simplicity part of it. It's the taking something that's real and making a kid version of it in a sense but not he's like making a it's like a it's like um something that's made for a kid but they made it really adult if that makes any sense like if they took um you know ronald mcdonald they made a horror movie on on hulu uh <laughs> he does that for you because his, his 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 scotty young does if anybody doesn't know scotty young Scotty does what's called what we would say baby variants. Marvel calls them. Uh, he does. They don't call him baby. They don't like the word baby. I forget what they call them. They call him something else. If you actually look up what they name it, he he did an interview at one point. He's like they don't like it called baby baby variants. Um, but they look like kids. They look like kids, like yeah. young kids, infants or, yeah. or toddlers. Um, but the that the bubbles say adult themed jokes, like not deep, like dark, but like. They're not right. saying goo goo gaga. They're not saying pull my finger. It's like there's like, some jokes in there. You're like, damn, I yeah, can't believe like, you went there. <laughs> yeah, like uh what like uh Weapon X there. And it's like, can't you put yep. some clothes on a bob? 
Yes, see, and that's the idea. So, like, it's a kid, but it's not, and it brings the kid out in me. But I also think that his artwork is just as good in black and white as it is in color. And so that's the other reason why I love Scotty Young. So, Scotty Young's work is so simple. Uh, it's so simple, it's annoying because I feel like I could draw it so easily. <laughs> and that's the problem with it, too. So, it's, there's a little bit of touch. We'll go back and forth on this. But I will say there's literally just a day where it was like, Boop. oh my God, this guy's amazing. I want everything he's ever dri- drawn. I want an original piece of artwork, but I can't spend three grand on it. And <laughs> I want same boat. Still trying to figure that one out. And so you and I go back and forth on how many who has more covers. We text each other a lot. You get the <laughs> comic book covers. Yes, exactly. Barely now though. I'm catching up. <laughs> yes, and, you are. And um, I get screwed as a fan when your comic book store owner that you go to is also <laughs> the fan of the same thing. Is that I get the leftovers? Um, but. I will say he, you have my back. I guarantee you I'm one of the first people you contact when you get a Scotty Young cover that you already he have first. in your, your collection. And yep. I go to, you go to me. So I, like you said, you're, you're the guy that buys the black and white Spawn comic books. I am your Scotty Young version of that. And yep. I appreciate that. Um, if anybody hasn't, just Google Scotty with a K, S-K-O-T-T-I-E, Young. Uh, literally some of the f- most fun comic book covers you'll ever see. Uh, and that's me just talking about his Marvel variants and his image variants and his other variants. He also has yeah. an unbelievable series as one of your favorite series. And I'll let you talk about that. Yeah. Uh, and I hate Fairyland. I hate Fairyland. I, I recommend it to everybody that comes in here. If they're looking for something different, if they're looking for something fun, if they're looking for something unique, I hate Fairyland. It, it is, uh, I always describe it as a demented version of Calvin and Hobbes. If you read Calvin yes. and Hobbes as you're younger, I read Calvin and Hobbes as a kid. I absolutely loved it. Um, I, I own every Calvin and Hobbes uh, book there is, uh, and that's the best way to describe I Hate Fairyland. Um, I, I actually, so this is, will probably surprise you, I don't have an I Hate Fairyland uh, cover in my personal collection yet. And I, that is going to be my next, is I'm going to be doing the I Hate Fairyland variant covers. I don't want to do the base covers, I want to do the variants, and I'm going to I start that I'm missing number one of them, that's it. Because he didn't go long on that one. I, surprisingly, he didn't go long on that one. Yeah. Like we mentioned earlier, there's people who should stay in their lane. Scotty Young can do both. He can write yeah, very much. and he can actually draw. So yep. I'm only missing one. But yes, there's the eye. Uh, uh, I, I would try to make this as clean as possible, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it here. This is, yep. was it, uh, uh, Fuck Fairyland yep. is the, is the uh, variant covers. Um and he also does Middle West, which is also really amazing. Again, very good. Series. I don't anything he touches. And Strange Academy is if if anybody out there likes Harry Potter, and they like Marvel comic books, that's what you absolutely it. love Strange Academy because it's yep. basically Harry Potter meets the Marvel universe. Um, yep. I, there's nothing he can do wrong. I, I again, I don't want to f- like fanboy over him, but like I just have anything he touches is amazing. And you have one, and you you have another appointment. Uh, yeah, I actually have four more. I have four right now. I now have four too, but I've got, so this is my most recent event seeing. I got Nova here. Yeah, got Nova. I've got the uh, run the jewels variant here. Um, my watch is <laughs> the Nova variant. <laughs> I've got, yep. uh, I'm currently rocking the 2099 Spider-Man. See, and that's, so I've got that cover signed. I'm just saying yep. we're going to go, we're going to go, who's is bigger here in a second. <laughs> Paul and I. I got this sign. You got this. You got. Oh, I got this here. Oh, hold on. Yeah, I've got my my first and only thus far. I have that. I actually. So I have a large collection of Scotty Young uh, statues in my yeah. personal collection. Um. So. But yeah. So. Bit- so. While you're getting whatever you're over there, it, it's there. There's something about. Yeah. See. And I could. I have a whole. Obviously, all of them are right here. Yeah. And, and they're just. I got my. My Stan Lee cover, which you I think you have signed, right? I have signed by Stan. Yep. That yeah, was so, when I when I said, okay, I'm gonna meet Stan Lee. I'm gonna get his autograph. What am I gonna get signed? It was the Scotty Young Stan Lee cover because I mean, I just it's amazing. That is what comics are, right? That's right what there. it's all about. So that's if anybody's what watching this on YouTube, this is what it is. It's 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 this cartoonish fun uh like i mentioned i showed you this one too and he just showed you one if you look at yep. this this is the fantastic four um but this is the black and white version it's like look at that like that's to me is like it's just as characterist it's just yep. as good in art it's just as good at everything and it's black and white it doesn't need to yep. be color nope. and well i will say the um oh my gosh the gwenpool one oh. is super fun in color with the pink and the yellow mm-hmm. and she's slurping from like a 
like a big gulp. And it looks like there's like the big gulp leaking is pink everywhere, but it looks like blood. And so also follow Scotty's. I think it's at Scotty Young, honestly, on Instagram. He does yep. daily sketches and all these other things. He shows you his art. Um, it, it's the lines are great. The 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 like I said, I, there, to me, it's that thing that brings me back to watching a cartoon, but it also has this like adultness to it. It's like yep. you couldn't just be like if he ever drew a cartoon for like Hulu or something like that. Likely, I would think it would be on that borderline. Would be like, eh, my kid's not old enough yet. Yeah. And, and that's where Scotty would be. I mean, think about it. I hate the Fairland. I hate Fairland. would be a freaking amazing Hulu show. It'd be so good. Like, it, it, yeah, I, yeah, we've talked about this. Not one, one of your favorite story it. arcs. What yeah. Was that? Oh, I love it. Um, it so it, a little bit, a little bit on Scotty. So this is this is early work. That's some early Scotty. Um, and then he does his his baby stuff, which I had the cat back here on uh, that I showed earlier. Um, so for me, I, I was always a DC guy, right? You know. I was a big DC guy, and then I uh, I started getting into to collecting some Marvel stuff, reading more Marvel stuff, and then I got into collecting variants. And when I saw Scotty's work, I became absolutely hooked. Um, it's it's fun. It's the child thing. It brings me back to my childhood. Why why do we collect comics, right? Uh, you know, most comic collectors that are true readers and and passionate fans of comics read them as kids and it brings me back to my childhood it's the it's the superheroes is how my little friends and i were pretending we're superheroes outside annoying the neighbors acting like idiots and that's what his art is it's these kids you know dress up this is cap if you don't clean your room you're not going to play with the little avenger club you know that's what it is it's those fun little bits of our childhood coming back and uh that's why i love scotty's work in that and, and i love i hate fairyland with it um middle west is definitely a deeper series it, yes, it surprised it me it's, it's a darker storyline about what it's about um but it is phenomenal the uh work that's involved in it is terrific um and so, so that's like what you Scott mentioned Mike. about the kid thing but i obviously like you mentioned it his start like yeah. this is unbelievable and it's yeah. not kid. And so what I was saying about Alex Ross earlier, and you mentioned too about the realistic thing is he's also a one trick pony, mm. right? If you think about Alex Ross, again, yeah. this is not to diminish what, what his does. artwork is. He is, does paint artwork and that's all he does. That's what he does. Yeah, there's no other. Marvel looked at um, uh, Scott and he was like, hey, can you do a cover like Venom again? He would be able to do it. Uh, yeah. he also did the manga um, Spider Clan. Yeah. Back in the day. Um, he also yeah. did. Iceman, he did, and then this is a Human Torch. So this is where I got started going into that more like uh, childish ish. Um, yep. But he had that. He has that. He's a multiple trick pony. Like I said, he could do multiple things. It's not just um, the kid or the child, the baby, the baby versions of the covers. Um, he can draw. It's just this is where he found his niche, and now literally all he does is writes strange academy yep. uh he's the author in strange academy uh and does variant covers yeah that's his thing like he doesn't have to do up, anything though. else it's 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 crazy and, and i thought when i started the collection that i was going to be able to get all of them uh i felt like okay i'm going to be able to collect them all i'm going to be able to yeah. pokemon this one i'm going to collect them all <laughs> and then you start trying to like i was like oh i'll make a list and i'll start checking it off yeah uh, it's it's infinite deep. number of it's, it's deep. so deep and now i kick yep. myself for being pissed about wanting to get the scotty young covers to the point where now i'm like i oh, should have taken taken them the whole time because there's well, so you know, many of them i and... I, uh, I should have brought my venom pool with me when i just got my venom pool uh, or uh, that was the that was one of the iconic covers the what if venom pool yep. uh, i finally added to my collection i decided to uh to pony up uh, I had sold some some of my personal hockey collection off, and I said I'm going to get something really special for myself, and, I, and it's got to be Scotty. So I got the What If Venom Pool, uh, 9.8 graded, so it's a perfect pristine cover. Yeah. And that's what I decided to add to my personal collection because it's this one, one of those things. That's the one yeah. to me, and that's not. I'm a big Run the Jewels fan. That's the reason why that one is. There's definitely a number yeah. of covers. Honestly, this was one of them. 
Yeah. And then, and then the, uh, there's this actually is a black one. and white version of that. Too, I, that I know it was those, it was the second, this was the second print or that was the second print. There was one of the two. The black and white was a limited print. And I think it was only okay. like 250 copies or something. It's something psychotic. that like for either of us to our collection is going to hurt, but this one was the I other one that. that, that was amazing. And I ended up getting it signed. Uh, with this certificate of authenticity, obviously, uh, yep. on it, it was from C2E2 2019. Um, nice. But those are ones that I was like, okay, I want. Uh, but this is the one because of the tattoo on me, uh, because of my love for Run the Jewels, the band, um, but also because it's super freaking rare. But it's like, it's the same thing I'd have to do with rare. what you do. It's I'd have to pony up. But, I mean, honestly, this issue cover on eBay right now, a 9.8 graded, is going for 700. Yeah. And it's like, it's one of those things that's like, it, 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 it's going to have to happen someday, but it's someday. not in the books right now. And, and yep, someday. we'll figure it out at some point. Leave. But uh, that was my second tattoo, was this one. It was that's my nice, Stan Lee uh, one. And then it was that one. And it was like, I have to get this done because I love Run the Jewels. I think they're some of the greatest rappers of all time. And I love Scotty Young, and it just it made my love for him to it, you know. Then I got my Nova, uh, and then I I'm gonna get um, one filling in here in May 12th, and I'll get more Scotty. I think this arm. Right, is supposed so, to so be... what's filling in? You know. Oh, so I have back and forth on it. There was two that I was. It was the Five O Goes West Five O from the the, t- yeah, the movie was, Five O Goes West. That, that was up there, but I also found a couple. It's the um, it's the cover with Spider Man is being eat, uh, or taken over by Venom. Um, yeah, that one also seems like it might fit in that spot. So it might actually be a cool version. I thought maybe I'll stick with mostly Marvel. Uh, I've been very back and forth spot. on getting that one myself. Yep. So now so we have to I think who's going to get that one if it's going to be you or me. Well, so we'll I was, a, if we do the stencil, maybe we'll go at the same time and get it. We'll do this little like oh, mandate. <laughs> like like we could like our schedules would ever work that jay would be available at the same time both and i were, <laughs> you and I, were I think jay could work with us on this come on yeah. man help us out so i uh i was going to do my next one was going to be the flipping deadpool uh i wanted to do the upside down version with him shooting but before that i realized uh and i and i couldn't believe it the cover that that got me was the galactus the silver surfer number one cover and I realized uh, in all of my Scotty Young collecting, I didn't have it. I was like, how the hell do I not own this book? So I went out that night and I got it. Uh, and I got a signed copy. Uh, so I add that to my collection. And that's going to be my next one is going to be Galactus. It's him uh, sitting like Indian style with the earth split open. He's eating the cereal bowl. The cereal bowl out of it. I yeah, love it. I, I love it. It's so much fun. And Silver Surfer's in the corner going, ew, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave out Surfer for room space because I need to make sure Deadpool fits in there. Uh, over, but that's going to be my next one. Is going to. I've always wanted to spawn. I mean, Spawn was my number one fan. Like, Spawn was the number one for me all that's, the years. I think. I think Spawn's going on my entire. Well, so I thought I was like, oh, but how can I? And this is nothing against. How can I get a Spawn tattoo? That's not done by Scott Todd McFarland. Like that. That to me is yeah. one of those weird things. But I would do. Um, he did it for the number two fifty yep. for Spawn. Uh, yep. I would do Gorgeous his cover. version of Spawn. Uh, it yep. would be fun to do that kind of thing. But again, I love to me, it's cover. like for my love for Spawn and he's my number two favorite artist of all time. Yep. I think I have to get a Spawn tattoo that's done by Tom McFarlane. I just have to. I just, I don't, I don't yep. think I could ever get one that's not done by him. But I think that I actually, Jay, our, our tattoo artist, our, our common yep. tattoo artist, um, loves the fact that he talks about you and I, about how he'd love to just literally tattoo you and I. If we had infinite number of money and he had the ability <laughs> to put it in the schedule, uh, we talked yep. pre-recording. You've got four or five appointments. I've got four or five appointments set up. Um, that he's uh, that says something. I think also Jay understands. Yeah. He loves doing his art. Uh, Jay yep. is an artist himself. He can draw himself. He can do it himself. Um, but he's like, if I'm gonna tattoo something, I might as well tattoo someone who's actually good at art as well. And I think it's why he loves uh, doing Scotty Young as well, because he's like, I can do this. This is cool. I like doing this art. It's neat. It's fun. It's all the details. All this, the small details that are added. Those little things, you know. When he went back and did my uh, did my Spider Man, he was like, Oh, I gotta wait. There's a little spot of webbing I missed on his belt. I gotta make sure that gets in there. Um, you know, and for something that is supposed to be child, yep. like it is also heavily detailed. You know, I mean, looking at the cap room, you know, there's all kinds of these little extra add-ons in that bedroom, you know, that are put in there. 
And so um, Paul and I could likely talk for hours. So <laughs> it won't be the next episode, I don't think. I think we'll wait one more. But what I wanted to get done, and the reason why I want to do this episode now is to do our top artists so that we can actually fanboy over Scotty Young a little bit more. That I think we'll do <laughs> one other one that's something else. And then the next one will be our top 10 favorite Scotty Young covers. Um, Great. I think it has to happen. I think it, it, I think what we, Let's do our top 10 favorite Scotty Young covers, covers that are done at Marvel variants because then it it weeds it down a little bit. It, it gets it. Not many options otherwise. <laughs> there are every comic cup cover he has ever done, I'll, I'll collect and I like. Yep. Um, but like we just, I just bought the goon and I yep. had the spawn one and stuff like that. I just think it, girl, it's I have favorite girl in my collection. Yep. Marvel variant covers his works. And that includes, he just did an alien cover. Um, he's done yep. Star Wars covers. Anything that's printed by the Marvel imprint, um, I think would work. But we'll do that. I think we'll do one more so there's not back-to-back -back artwork ones. And yeah, then we'll get into it. So I think two episodes from now, we'll do our top 10 favorite Scotty Young covers. Um, and, and and you know, maybe we're big enough by that. Scotty Young will come on. I don't know. But I, <laughs> but I think it's cool. I think it'd be fun to dreams, do that. Buddy, the hopes and the dreams. And there also could be one of those things that I also talked about. Maybe we do it if you have to own the cover to say it's your favorite cover. Or not your favorite cover, yep. but our top ten favorite covers that we own, each of us. Of Scotty that Young. could work yeah, too. I like so that. you that's actually, cool. I think that's cool that's too. Cool. You have to own it to actually yeah. make it into your list. Thankfully, now that I have that Galactus, I I think I have all of. I would have all of my top. We just talked about how hard this episode was. You know how hard it's going to be for us to whittle down to 10, 10, 10 covers. So what are you at right now? I can't remember what I was at. We're, it we're was one, over 100. Oh, 100, 120 something, hundred. Yeah, and I must. Yeah, you're right. You're right ahead of me. It's not I'm like 130, I mean, 140, somewhere. Yeah, in there. something like that. And I'm at yeah. like 120 so, or 125. So we have to go through 130, 100. Exactly. 100, and there's definitely ones that are, I own because they're Scotty <laughs> Young. There's definitely ones I own, and there's one right here, 1872. Yep. I guess it's fun. I like this. I own it. It's yep. great. It's not one of my top ten for sure. No. So there's definitely gonna be ones that are not gonna make it. I just own oh, them God, because yeah. I own them. Um, but there's definitely ones that like. I have them displayed in these little totes on a shelf and there's ones that I push towards the front. So I look at them first and those are the ones yep. that are in that top 10. Um, awesome. I buy, if I buy them a lot of times, they may be the ones that are signed because I usually buy them signed or get them signed. Um, and so uh, Scott is another one of those people that is very good to his fans. You go to his website, you can buy yeah. his stuff directly from his site or not. But very reasonable. I mean, I can go to your shop and buy his variant cover from your shelf for 20 bucks. If you have like an aftermarket, not like the day it comes out. Right. Uh, or I can buy it from his website for $25 sign. And it's yep. like, okay, <laughs> cool. I'll buy the sign one. And I know it's coming from his website. It's going to be signed by him. Yeah. Uh, some by sort him. of like, yeah. So um, he's another one of those people that I think when we met, hopefully meet him at some, someday, he's going to be like our, my George Perez experience or, you know, other experiences yeah. with meeting artists. So. I, think I can only imagine as an artist to meet someone that has your artwork on their body. You got to give them a little prop over well, the average. This right person. here, this yeah. space right here, it's being saved. Scott a Young signature right here in some ink, and then I'm gonna get go right that next day to to, to uh, Jay's spot and have him tattoo it. I'm doing the self same thing, except I plan on doing the Scotty selfie that he has of himself with the hands out. At the top okay. of my shoulder and him signed underneath and then all Scotty down. This the is also one of the ones I might do. It's his newest one. The, yep. the, so I it's on my phone. That's how much of a freaking nerd I am about Scotty Young. <laughs> um I think I typed the word Scotty Young into Google search way too much. Uh, I think it may be one of those things that I, he might he may there may be a red alert out there. <laughs> they probably that, might fly against you. <laughs> um Again, I think we'll go back to the simpleness of it. I think it's simple lines, simple drawing, childish. It brings us back to our childhood. Fun. Um, it's fun. It, it's different. It's the variant covers. A lot of these, some of these variant covers can get really obscure. These variant covers are definitely well worth it. Uh, they're they're just not. Yeah, see, Star Wars. Star um, Wars. So as we finish this episode up, I got tattooed by Jay um, a couple weeks ago, um, and we were wondering how. You let him buy that Star Wars variant signed by all those people off of Will, and you did not get it. How did you I let know. that happen? So, he almost feels bad about it. He almost feels like, why did I steal this from Paul? I so so there was that's a two-parter. Okay. 
So part number one, at the time, I wasn't doing Star Wars. I did Marvel characters only. Only. Only had to be Marvel character. I'd be superhero character. Well, you know, spy I'd be superhero character, let's say. Um, you know, I wasn't Star Wars, I kind of written off to its own thing. So at the time I wasn't doing Star Wars, which I am now. Um, but at the time I wasn't. So it was a little easier to let it go. And secondly, um, I that was uh that did not belong to the store itself, that was a consigner. So even though I should have looking back now, I should have said, Hey man, all right, let me let me have dibs on because he has thing. it hanging up in his tattoo studio and i'm looking but you at know what? It, that's like, beautiful man that's great I, I was, no i'm glad i'm glad he owns it not someone else but my point was i was pissed that i didn't buy it and then i'm like <laughs> then i like went to the next level i'm like how the hell did paul not buy it yeah and jay, jay goes yeah. i have no idea i i got that for a steal and i'm like Oh yeah, he did too. Yeah, he 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 stole that thing. He didn't feel and, bad because he definitely paid for it for lightly, slightly more than what Will paid for it. So that there is yeah. that aspect. He knows he didn't get ripped off. He knows yeah. Will uh, Will didn't get ripped off. No, and I took care. We're, I, I took we're care. talking I about Will. Care. Will's yeah, our buddy who owns Comic Con. Yep. Will and Jay own Comic Con in Bangor. Um, Will was done with this book, which is all of us. We all have those books. Uh, yep. Will is not a diehard Scotty Young fan like we are, and. No. Uh, there are definitely books that, like, you know, I, I just nor is he a diehard Star Wars fan like Jay. Correct. So, and that's why I looked at my comic book collection the other day and I was like, I have the first appearance of Domino. I'm ready yeah. to move on from it. I don't care about that as much anymore. If anybody yeah. wants to buy Dom first appearance of Domino from me, X Force, you can buy it. Cool. That's where Will was at. And it just happened to be that the two biggest Scotty Young collectors in the Be greater Bangor area <laughs> missed somehow missed out on this. It was in my hand. Jay if hand. you ever get a tattoo at Fort Castle tattoo from Jay Cochran, it's hanging on the wall. Pay homage. He got that yep. book over over, Give over us both love of us. Neither of us I, have it. Hey, I got. Yep. An, I have a message. If you go back further on Will, hey Will, Justin, you want to buy this? I'm like, ah, not right now. I don't. Yeah, know and those were the early days of Galactic. I don't even know if you were coming here then. I don't think I. No, even, I don't think so. But Will and I have been friends for years. So so yeah. it, so if anybody doesn't, we're kind of like obscure with this. But it was signed by Peter Mayhew. Yeah. Which is huge. Is it, the, is it signed by Scotty Chewbacca. too? Yep. And, and Jason Aaron. Yes. Yep. So the three and one of those guys is dead. Yep. <laughs> so yeah. you can't never, get never a signature anymore from it. it it's it's it a again. trifecta. It's not. Is it graded? It's, it's graded too. Slab nine eight. <laughs> it's a yellow label slab nine eight. Peter Mayhew, Scotty Young, Jason Aaron. So Jay. Jay, I'll pay 20 bucks. Jay, I've known you longer. Podcast, like, are these two idiots ever going to shut up? Jay, I've known you longer. Um, just let Jay, you know, I know you longer. Star Wars, dude. I'm your hook up I got, to Star Wars. I got, my, I got tattooed before Paul did from you. Um, <laughs> so, so, Jay Owens, just to let everybody know, uh, Comic Con is coming up soon, too. Let's give a shout out to that. I yeah, think, are you on next week, too? Yes, I'm on next week too. Yeah. I'll oh, see next you week. On I, this recording this Thursday. This comes out Don't Wednesday. We're actually on tomorrow night. It's technically tomorrow night. Yep. When this podcast get released. Um, don't cross the streams on the Bangor Comic and Toy Con Facebook page. Paul will be on myself and Bob Raymond. Yeah, Bob Raymond. And Will and Jay from Comic Con. Uh, we mentioned Jay. Jay is also a tattoo artist at Forecast the Tattoo. If you're in the greater Bangor area, um, book your tattoo for 2027. Uh <laughs> <laughs> he has no appointments right now, uh, but it's great. If you want to get on the books, he's an unbelievable tattoo artist. Poor Jay, he's phenomenal. It's support him. I, if you take a tattoo appointment from me, I'm not going to be pissed. I, I, Jay deserves it. He's an unbelievable person, unbelievable tattoo artist. Uh, Will's great too. Will's amazing. They both own. Will Comic helps me out so much in the store. Thank you, Will, for all your help. Your support. Uh, double his salary. Um, and <laughs> and so we'll those are the two guys that. I just mentioned. If you don't know those guys, those are guys are great. Follow the Bangor comic and toy con. Uh, Paul will be there set up, uh, directing people to his store. <laughs> uh, <laughs> OBC will have a bar there set up this year. We're at the Bangor mall, uh, October 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, or yeah, right. Sec First I weekend in right October. <laughs> um, and so check it out. If you're in the greater Bangor area, if you're in all of Maine, 
You've got to come yeah. to this. Bangor Comic come and Toy Con. It's super fun. The guys from Clerks are going to be there this year. Um, there's going to be many more people. I guess some more people being announced. There's a um, bunch of horror guests coming, which is perfect for October. Fun. It's going to be so yeah. much fun. I cannot wait. You can buy OBC beer. You can see Paul and the Galactic Comics crew there. Um, the guys from Clerks is going to be great. It's gonna be, I cannot wait. I can't believe it's so far away. It's five months away or four months away. I can't wait. Uh, Bangor Mall. Again, when's the last time you did anything cool at the mall, man? Uh, like this is a, 2003. I'm going to throw it a guess. I'm going to say 03. I was probably 03. 2004. I was a senior in high school. <laughs> so, yeah, Strawberries so, closed, and I bought my JVC Kaboom box. It's actually behind me right now at the store. I got so my It's at a mall. And the same guys that were also in Mall Rats. It's going to be badass. So, I cannot wait for that. Awesome. Uh, let's do a quick rundown of your list if you remember what it is yeah. for top 10 uh and then we'll close this thing out so that uh my wife doesn't kill me and yeah, same. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm glad we're on the same page with this part of it at least uh yeah. <laughs> with the, but why don't you give a rundown on your number your, your 10 through one my right, 10 through one i go with jim lee uh alex ross frank miller larry hama adam kubert neil adams tim sale gabriel delato Francesca Matina, and you know, because of our absolute undying love of Scotty Young's artwork. Scotty will take anything you want. Um, number 10 for me is Charlie Adler, Walking Dead. Or sorry, I don't want to say those things. Charlie Adler, number 10. Greg Capullo, number nine. Number eight is John Romita Jr. Number seven is Sarah Pacelli. Number six is George Lopez. Number five is Michael Del Michael, Michael Del Mundo. Can't speak right now. <laughs> number That's four terrible. is Alex Ross. Number three is Ben Bishop. Number two is Todd McFarlane. Number one is Scotty Young. Um, finishing that out, what I will say is, to add to that, Ben Bishop will also be there, uh, which will be kind of cool at the Bangor Comic Con, um, and it's cool. Uh, pick up his ish. Go to the his website, too, bishart.net. Purchase his stuff. Again, I'm doing this as a – he's not paying me for this. He's not doing anything – He's a local guy. He's from Westbrook. We're from, we're living yep. in the greater Bangor area. He's from Maine. He deserves all the credit. Um, I did. He's number he's three awesome on my guy. list. Legitimately. He's not number three on my list because he's from Maine or I know him. He's number three on my list because he's legitimately a good guy, but good drawer, but he's a phenomenal guy. Yeah, so check out Bishop. Yep. So I didn't get a chance you, to mention my, my quick drops here. Uh, oh yes. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I love Jock. Uh, so I got Jock on there. Uh, Jay Lee, uh, who I met at, at Boston Comic Con, he's an amazing artist, he's a great guy, he's phenomenal. Uh, Art Germ does some incredible work. Uh, I got Adam Kubert, uh, Adam Hughes, Steve Ditka, and uh, Jack Kirby. Because I mean, so I had such a hard time, right? How do you not put those people on a list, but then at the same time, they're so far beyond my age and my ability to even. But that's the thing we talk about at Orna Brewing Company when people ask me what my favorite beer is and I don't say tubular. <laughs> it calls not tubular. It's your flagship IPA. And I'm like, it's because it is the like, obvious pick. Yeah. Jack yeah. Kirby. It has, to be, yeah, it has to be said, right? It has to be said. So I had him on my list and I had him in the top 10. I took him off the top 10. And I'm like, realistically, like, will I ever own a Jack Kirby? No. No. I never own a Jack Kirby, you know? And so, so I threw my, him on my, my honorable mention for the sake of it because how do you know, right? And my honorable mentions are uh, Lee and Miller, like I mentioned before. And I also had Francisco Matina uh, on there because of my love for Spawn. Uh, yeah. But again, I, art, there's, I haven't seen bad art for any of these companies that he follows. <laughs> it's just the art that sticks out to us. Um, yep. So Paul and I will figure out over the next week or so what we're going to do for the next episode of the poll list. Um, but the following episode after that will be top 10 Scotty, uh, Scotty Young covers that we each own. Uh, that will be fun. There are some cover covers that we both own, uh, but there are also covers that he owns that I don't own, which would be kind of fun to, to figure out. What At least planned. 15 more. Uh, so <laughs> he's going to say that. And I was going to give a shout out to freaking Galactic Comics on Hamish Street in Bangor. <laughs> if you live in the greater Bangor area, it is the number one comic book store in the Bangor area. Uh, he also has Pokemon cards when they are available, Good but Lord. there's also some pretty high end cards there as well. Uh, yeah. Paul has started setting up for CGC. So if you're looking for CGC stuff, he's working on that as well. Uh, back CGC issues, uh, trade paperbacks. Uh, you just mentioned manga, some magic cards, you name it. Board games, vintage toys, new toys. You name it, we do it. You name it, they got it. If you are nervous about talking about your hobbies to your 
friends at work, he likely has those hobbies at his store. Uh, Guaranteed. Guaranteed. So every Wednesday, you'll see me there too. If you ever want to stop by and say hi, I usually there around five o'clock when he opens and uh, I'm there too. So if you want to say hi, obviously follow him on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, uh, like this podcast on Apple Podcasts uh, and Spotify. Um, always fun, man. I We could talk for hours. I can't. One of these Absolutely. days, we're going to do this at, at, at your shop. We're going to every the Thursday we, we record, you're going to sh- close the shop down. We're going to go in the back room. We're going to set up the microphones. We're going to do this in person when this I love that pandemic idea. is over. I love it. And we can do it so we can actually do it. And maybe we'll bring a guest in. Maybe we'll have someone else have a guest top 10 list. Maybe we'll bring Will or Jay in and have them That'd do cool. it or a regular your customer at your store to do that. So um, go say hi to your family. Kiss them. Love them, everybody. Stay safe out there, everybody. Uh, again, follow Galactic Comics on Instagram, Facebook, all those places at Galactic Comics. Um, visit them. They're great. Not just because I like Paul, but they're great. Um, Make it so you can quit the job. Much appreciated. That's right. That's my goal in life. Make it so Paul can quit the job. Baby. You need time. to work one job in your lifetime, and that's the job you're actually happy to be at. So one Paul's going to do that. So, um, But thanks, Paul. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'll talk to you soon. 